we're live with the star wars legends podcast and i have to make an apology why the, these haven't been coming up on spreaker our top 10 eu uh authors list will not upload to spreaker i have to split it in half and release it in two parts it's too long uh, <laughs> I guess that I shouldn't have named every author that wrote something half decent. Yes, your your top thirty five. I, I couldn't. It's the Sophie's choice. I just say take me, you know. <laughs> so that's that's the delay on that, and why there's been so many live and let's discuss episodes and not legends episodes coming out. Uh, so, anyway, uh, welcome to the show, Magneto. Alex, uh, it's Magneto, but yeah, Magneto. Yeah. I say Magneto because I yeah. always read a T. I'm like Matt yeah. Wilkins, where he just makes up words. Yeah, <laughs> I, it, here. when Matt and I first became friends <laughs> and we talked all the time before he had kids, I started picking up all of how he says things wrong. And our mm. friend Tristan's like, Jeremy, you're starting to talk like Matt. <laughs> so, you talk to Matt enough. Yeah, so Magneto, Magneto, Magneto. Yes, Magneto. Magneto. Or Magneto, it's fine. It's just there's no neat. Oh. Can I just call you Alex? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can. It? There's That's too fine. many Alexes. There's like fifty Alexes They're in the Discord servers at least. There's there's a, there's a Brit Alex. He's British, and then there's me, who's not British. So, but I'm old... the I'm the best Alex, objectively okay. speaking. For long term okay. viewers, there's another Alex too. <laughs> There's an even I other one, but I'm the best that. one. No. <laughs> oh yes, I I do remember. He he's good. It's good to to weed when you're angry at someone. You know. <laughs> you're too young for that one, Alex. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you're too young for you're too young for that shit show because I don't think there was a Legends podcast when that happened. <laughs> I I think he may have appeared on one Legends podcast. When no, he was, he was not allowed on here. He was not. Okay, I don't think he was. He, I I was so irritated with him after. See, he, he had so many the Unabomber had, on one. Of he Django. had so many swings. You know, he, he was like he was up and then he, he would go down and I and I can't remember like a, like where in the timeline of events like he was like when Legends podcast happened if he was on his upswing or downswing. He used to comment on the early episodes. I don't know. I, I haven't heard from him in years. I haven't either. In fact, I thought you were him, Alex. <laughs> like, why is why is Edward made another another fucking account? <laughs> Remember the Google Doc? We no, it wasn't a Google Doc. Remember, like we had a list of like his like twenty or so known aliases that he would I think get. it was a Google Doc. Yeah, because that we, he kept making. And we had to remove we had to remove him from a Facebook group and it took hours. Because yeah, he, he had, had a curse of he had curse of having a common accounts. name. No, no, no. It wasn't so his name actually wasn't Alex. Oh, okay. uh, but he had some several of his alt accounts were all variants of Alex. But he had like 20 different alt accounts at least that we were aware of. And he would just it, some of them would be him. There was one where he was dressed as a woman. <laughs> okay. He he was a unique character, and he, he when he was on on his on his good days, he would just fight with other people. Okay. He, he once said, "You obviously haven't heard of Chi, say Leland Chi, which I want to put on a T-shirt." Ah, memories. Oh no. Has Jeremy oh, dropped? I think so. This is the second time in Legends podcast history that Jeremy has had the bad internet. He's, oh, he's, he's back. back. He's back. He's I'm back. back. It, it, yeah, my internet connection is really piss poor at the moment. I'm not Remember sure. Remember that? So is mine. We'll probably Remember have that? like him being frozen or me <laughs> speaking like C3PO. So. Because the joke is, it, it was usually my internet that was bad, right? I was the one that always dropped. And then one day Jeremy dropped. And like, I. And I thought I had dropped, so like I just stopped talking, and I was like quiet while I was trying to work on my thing. And then I realized we were still live, and I was just like <laughs> sitting here quietly for like ten minutes, and be like, "Oh wait, I I thought Jer I dropped. No, Jeremy dropped. Oh, this is awkward." 
Yeah, <laughs> there's people commenting and stuff. It's, hello, everyone. I'm just throwing it out there. So, Dylan's here, too. I forgot to mention that he was here on his I'm road. always here. Remember, You're remember not always here. here. There's been at least one episode you weren't on. It's this when we had correct. Ryan Kennel on. <laughs> yeah, that was a wild time. <laughs> um, anyway, so, Alex, how'd you get into the EU? Oh, that's a whole story. Uh, mm. So, I, I grew up. You know, with the uh, with the prequels, and I uh, I didn't really know about the EU because I was kind of young, and uh, I knew about like the Force Unleashed. I didn't know it was like connected to anything. I just thought it was a video game, and I played it, and then the Lego games, and then uh, I saw the sequel movie. I saw I, actually one moment. I apologize. I have to do something. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna say hello to everyone here we'll start with the which is german you'll have to be more specific they're like no no one's not gonna wake up for this are you fucking kidding me <laughs> <laughs> where's the german marcel you know better Dil- uh, no one doesn't wake up on time for the legends podcast anymore plus he has like a family thing going on because we were supposed to record some live and let's discuss for me in the morning and for him in the evening um and that's not happening this week it'll have to happen next week um maxwell started reading wraith squadron excellent Excellent. i hope you enjoy it some of uh probably the best bantam series in my opinion not probably definitely the best bantam series Marcel, I yes, you do know better <laughs> than to expect Noah to show up <laughs> when it, unless it has to be at the two hour mark for him to show up, and then he derails <laughs> everything. <laughs> you know? Apologies Hell. about that. My my brother's in uh, Connecticut right now, mm-hmm. and so he uh, he calls me and will be like, "Hey, I'm I'm doing stuff. How are you?" I'm like, "I'm fine." But I said, I'm kind of doing something. I was like, oh, okay. I guess you don't love me. I had, there was thunderstorms going on. I was kind of scared. I was like, I'm sorry. And then I, and then I was like, I got to go, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, about your EU yeah. discovery. So I saw episode seven, and I was, I, I'd never seen a Star Wars film in theaters because I was four oh. when episode three came out to first perspective on how <laughs> young I am. Uh, and Jesus, so, yeah. I was four when the Phantom Menace came out. It was the first Same. movie I ever saw in the theater. Yeah, and I, I thought it was okay. I mean, Han Solo being Han Solo as he was in that movie kind of bugged me because it's like, what? Episode six, he got a family, and now his family is gone. Okay, whatever though. It's Star Wars and theaters, that's cool. And then episode eight came out, and the way Luke was portrayed really pissed me off. There's also other stuff. I won't get too much into it because I try not to hate on stuff unless I feel it's really warranted. But, uh, you know, the there's... Bounty Hunter Wars? Trilogy? Yeah, like Bounty Hunter Wars. Absolute garbage. I'll, I'll say that for the, all my all time and space. I get into that <laughs> separately. But, uh, uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, no one's never read it. Yeah, well, that's good for Noah. Uh, he's actually lucky. Uh, but I'm sure he'll like it, though, because he's German. <laughs> no, Noah, Noah's read it. Dylan hasn't oh, read it. Oh, Dylan hasn't yeah, read it. I haven't. Oh, okay. I haven't That's like the only Bantam trilogy he's not read. Oh, well, you're not. You're not missing out on much. It's, Here, I'll, yeah. I'll give you. I've the, never I'll finished give you the merchandise. So. I'll give you the hard cap of it and like little. So Boba Fett wakes up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then we get the 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 bounty hunter stuff from the from like after episode four. That's kind of interesting. But like is with uh Bosk's father and the yeah, bounty hunter guild. That's great. And Zizor's scheming. And then the next book, he, he's doing stuff in modern day. You don't care because it's boring. Uh, and then uh, uh, really? Zizor continues to reiterate the same thing he's been talking about in the previous book again and again and again to like Vader and Pop team. Uh, and then he also decides at the end of the book, you know, I could have used Boba Fett, but now I want to kill Boba Fett. So then the third book, he tries to kill Boba Fett until like some random officer on his ship is like, okay, but like Boba Fett could be useful. So like you shouldn't kill him. And then Zizor's like, you know, I never thought about that. And then he doesn't kill him. And then Boba Fett completes his mission, and that's the end of the trilogy. 
which and most of it's yeah. in the past. Yeah, most of it's in the past, which is it's, even... it's interesting in the first one, but then it's just kind of boring in the second one. Well, uh, nothing both, happens. In... That's that's the problem. That, that, I'd rather be pissed off is... at a story than have nothing happen. Oh my god, slave ship! Nothing happens. They steal the ha they steal Bosk's ship in yeah. the present day. Oh, oh, Kuwata Kuwat does something at the end. Yeah, yeah. He even <laughs> mentioned that. He, yeah, well, he's, he's there. Only he's kind of thing. He he yeah. occasionally does something interesting. Yeah, and there's a spider dude that's kind of cool. Oh he yeah, the, the collector. Yeah, he's cool, I guess. But ultimately, you know, for all the stuff that Noah talks about. And other people have talked about hating. I would rather hate something with a passion than feel absolute nothing every day I get off work and spend my time feeling like I'm still working as I get home to read that trilogy. It was just boring. I, I would take hatred over boredom any day. But derailed. So episode set or episode eight. Mm -hmm. Saw Luke, didn't like it. Saw Poe like arguing with the with the pink hair girl. That annoyed me. So I was like, I'm done with Star Wars. Um, but I did think Kylo Ren was kind of cool. He was like the only part I kind of liked about that movie. And so I looked up stuff about Kylo Ren on YouTube and I found geeks and gamers video with Ryan Kennel talking about Jason solo. And I have no idea what that is. I have no clue what he's talking about. So I watched the video like, Hmm, that's interesting. He mentioned the expanded universe. So then I look up the expanded universe on YouTube and I find Matt Wilkins entire playlist. I think at that point he was somewhere after the dark times he got into already something oh, like that. He hit rebellion era, or he hit rebellion era by that point. Then, and then I just binged all the way through, and then watched every upload as it came out, and that's how I learned about the expanded universe and got involved with it. So, and then so, COVID so. happened, and that's when I started reading it. Actually, before that, I was just collecting it and buying it. So let me ask you this: Did you mm -hmm. find out about us because we were in Matt's expanded universe for two uh, episodes? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think I remembered that you guys. I, I, I would watch all the streams and stuff, and you would sometimes come on. But then mm -hmm. I also looked up Expanded Universe stuff in general for other stuff, uh, just for, like, reviews besides his. And your video came up for, like, Mall Lockdown. So I watched your review right. in your basement when you were clean-shaven, talking about Star oh, Wars. Yeah, I, right. yeah. I had the yeah. studio that burned down, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I So I, I subscribed to you then with that. Uh, Dylan is always pops up on Matt's channel of eventually, like if, if he's not there for a while, he'll eventually pop up in a stream or something. So that's how I found out about Dylan. Um, and then uh, I found about twin sons foundation and all that through Matt Wilkins live streams and stuff. And Brian Borg would come on and Dylan would talk about the foundation and what they were doing. So that's how I learned about all that stuff. Basically everything centers around Matt Wilkins and everything gets branched out from there. It's my understanding of everything. Okay. That's uh, fair. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a lot of people's understanding at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so he's the only one who's really covered everything. Yeah. On video. Hmm. Well, I'm almost done. I should, after I get through Crucible and the Legacy comics again, I sh I should have gotten through everything that I can or most things. I don't really review source books, but you know, I you I'll read out some of the source books. They're yeah. worth your time. I was just yeah. talking to uh, Geeks Attic about this because mm -hmm. uh, he got confused. He's reading Dark Empire mm. and he got confused about some things. I'm like, oh, they talk about it in the source book. Well, I've read mm. the short stories and stuff that come from those source books. Like I've <laughs> looked those up on the, the Star Wars timeline.net and I'll download the PDF and I'll find the specific short stories and stuff within them. Okay. But then I'll, I'll check out. Like I won't read the rest of it. Um, but just because I was mainly focused on the story aspect and trying to review all that, so the, the other ones that are seldom touched are the Essential Guide series, because mm -hmm. uh, I think we were talking about this on um, on one of the discords. I can't remember how like uh, in the Clone Wars novelization, Karen Travis like depicts Tegruda and like Ahsoka's as if they're like at, we're very cat like, and people were wondering where she got it from. Well, she got it from the new Essential Guide to Characters. Because in like the they don't specifically say to Grudas or cat like, but like in like the in like the text when you read it, it, it mentions that they do a lot of things that like cats also do. And as Karen Travis would read those guides and use those in writing, it we or at least I think that's where yeah. she got it from. Yeah, mm. that would make sense. She was well versed in EU. 
yeah. For all the complaints about her, she she definitely did her homework. Well, that's uh, that's I, I do feel somewhat bad for Karen Travis. Hmm. She got the short end of the stick for yeah Clone Wars and what she established. She wrote the most Clone Wars material. She did, is novel wise, um, yeah. not comic wise. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I think I misspoke. It wasn't the new essential guide to characters. It was new essential guide to alien species. Okay. okay. That makes more sense. But, uh... um, we all we all know that Ahsoka is the greatest character that has ever <laughs> existed. All his our Lord and Savior Dave Filoni. She's, she's gonna fight cool. Thrawn. It's very important. And and we had to we had to cast Ewan McGregor's new wife. As Hera, even though that's like the worst choice of casting. It's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't give a shit. I'm not going to watch Ahsoka the show. Why would I do that to myself when I can watch Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? <laughs> oh, I went and saw Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's fine. None of the jokes work. Uh, see, see I laugh at two different types of things in an Indiana Jones movie. I, I laugh at the jokes and I laugh at the horrible death. That shish kebab to the chest that that, that uh, Chinese gangster gets in Temple of Doom is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Um, I, I haven't seen the movie. Uh, I've, I've, seen a, I've heard a lot of spoilers though because I don't care to see it. But, you know, one of the things that made me go, okay, well, I don't want to watch it is like, so like, regardless of how you feel about Mutt in the Kingdom of Crystal School, right? Like it gave, it gave, you know, Indy a kid, you know, and then established that, you know, uh, Marion or whatever from uh, Raiders is, uh, you know, kind of definitive love interest for him. And then, you know, as far, you know, without spoiling, I guess, for other people, some things are learned and I'm like, that's a similar thing, though, to like Han. Why can't he just be happy? Why, well, why does he have to be depressed all the time? Here's, here's the thing with Indiana so. Jones. If you watch the Indiana Jones show and you have really old Indy, like 80-year-old Indy, yeah. he admits in an episode he has mul he has a ton of kids with different women. That's, no, no, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> in fact, there's an episode where his daughter is taking care of him. Mm -hmm. So... If, okay, so he gets a happy ending, I guess, in the end, then, in that really, really old ending. Yeah, well, it doesn't. Yeah. They 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 reshot the ending. It was yeah. so blatant to because no one liked the ending. But mm. James Mangold, I think, is the director's name. He directed Logan. He cannot direct comedy. He's just terrible at it. So he gives Phoebe Waller Bridge a bunch of comedy that it's cringy but it could have worked a little bit at least once and, and you don't get a single laugh out of it she's the proverbial comic relief and she's it doesn't work um there are some great nazi deaths in the beginning he does throw someone under a truck they actually do get run over so we're a step above kingdom of the crystal skull blowing into the blowgun to reverse the dart into someone's mouth. Which is the only direct indie murder. There's a bunch of indie murders in the beginning. And then he's a feeble old man and he can't do anything. Which is kind of interesting. Mm. Um, that's, yeah. It, it's it's like, it's part, what do we do with... Um, what do we do different from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? And it's also, what did Kingdom of the Crystal Skull do right? So, like, if you combine these two movies into one, I think it would be pretty good. But it, it's well acted. It's fine. Go see it if you want to or stream it on Disney Plus before Disney buys out Hulu. <laughs> so... That that's my review. It's fine. It's it's in continuity with everything else. Indiana Jones. That was the shocking thing. I was saying that before the stream. That was, I was so pleased that it didn't contradict anything. 
at least not that I've noticed. So, yeah. Um, anyway, let's talk some Star Wars. Let's talk some Star Wars video games. We did a video game episode years ago. Dylan and I ranked our favorite Star Wars games. But in recent years, we've had a lot of Nintendo Switch re-releases of Star Wars games. EA released two horrible games. Uh, there was a Star Wars flight simulator no one played. A bunch of bad app games. And Jedi rolling over. Well, I'm sorry, Fallen Order. <laughs> All you do is roll around on the ground. Like, it's like, let's take Jedi Outcast and make it a rolling simulator. The only thing I liked about that, I just find it funny because Mark Hamill played, you know, played in Star Wars first, and then later on we're going to voice the Joker. Mm-hmm. And then this guy... He was in Shameless, and then he went on to the terrible Gotham show, but he was the best part of the terrible Gotham show. Where well, he was he the Joker? Wrong. Well, see, there's a thing about this. The Gotham show was not like a loose Joker, because for some reason, it's kind of a similar thing to George Lewis and, you know, all the things with having to kill Anakin Solo. It was like, mm-hmm. well, you know, we have Joker always in the movies, so we don't want to confuse people with Joker in a TV show. So you can't use Joker in the TV show, but everybody wanted to use Joker. So they came up with a character named Jerome, who was only meant to up a web store, and he was meant to be like this, like, being in the future. Mm-hmm. You died, but everybody loved him. And so they had to keep finding excuses to bring him back. They even killed him off, and then they brought him back to life. And it was pretty clear at that point, this they can't use the name. They can't say this is Joker. But Jerome, for all intents and purposes, with no makeup or anything, this is your show's Joker. And then they even went so far as to kill him off definitively. And there's had a, a tw- a evil, uh, not an evil, well, a twin trope where they had Jeremiah, who was allowed to actually wear like a suit and have makeup, but still wasn't the Joker. So they just kept finding ways to push around this thing that they weren't supposed to do while obviously doing it in every season. And I think he was on the show. The show sucks, but he's great. I got about 20% of that because yeah, of, um, I, I got the gist of it. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I think it That's I just, think it works better. <laughs> it's about what Gotham the show deserves for talking, <laughs> to be fair. Um remember they, they wanted Jada Pinkett Smith to be a gangster. Named Fish. Oh, she was, she was Fish Mooney. She yeah. was uh, basically Penguin's boss before he became the one in charge. Yeah. Also, Penguin's a great part of that show. But everything else besides Rome slash Jeremiah and Penguin suck. Mm-hmm. It also has the worst bat suit I think I've ever seen. Oh, God. That was a terrible finale to the entire show. That was so yeah. bad. It looks so bad. I was yeah. so disappointed. I was like, you guys can try a little bit harder. It's the final episode. But they just... (laughs) Why bother? Why bother? It's a DC show. They always fumble it at the end. But anyway, let's get into some Star Wars games. So I want to throw this one. This is not a complete... What, What I wanted to talk about are the Star Wars games that have not gotten a remaster or a re release in more than a decade. Which is all of the EU games because the EU got discontinued almost a decade ago. Also, they cannot be PC ports because Steam Steam has pretty much all the Star Wars games that have been released for PC and they have taken fairly decent care of them with the exception of Dark Forces 2 and some of the flight simulator games. Those don't seem to run well in Windows 10 from my what I've tried to run. Since I, you know, so anyway, I want to to throw this one out there. It's not a not an official game, but why on earth has Force Unleashed 2's DLC not been released on PC? Like, come on, let's just do that. 
We have the ultimate Sith edition of Force Unleashed on Steam. Let's get this Force Unleashed 2 DLC on there so I can throw Chewbacca and Han Solo around and fight um, <laughs> Leia, who looks like Bastila. So, anyway. Um, let's... So I wanted to spread this out to also LucasArts games as a whole because LucasArts did more than just Star Wars. They did some Indiana Jones. They did all of Indiana Jones. Um, they've done the first video game I ever played, Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Did Thrillville, you know, that sort of thing. So, Dylan, what are you thinking? The one that immediately came to mind um, was... Star Wars The Clone Wars, the 2002 vehicle combat game. I think this needs a... Uh, I think it it's a very good game, and I think the uh, the graphics hold up fairly, like, all right for what it is. And I think the gameplay for the vehicle sections also holds up pretty well. There could be some tweaks. But the um, the parts of the game where you are on foot are atrocious and i think if you were going to like remaster a game that would be a good candidate for one that like actually probably needs a remaster to mm. fix some of the flaws and also although i don't like um i don't like it typically when remasters mess with like the actual story of the game but i would in this case as it is a bit of a continuity error error I would like some more explanation as to when exactly Ula Keldroma fought uh, or taught the Jedi how to beat the Dark Reaper, because it, it it seems like it happened after the events of um of his duel with his brother when he like lost when Nomi took away his Force abilities and he was exiled. But again, that doesn't make sense because like why why would why would the events of like um uh redemption have taken place if like Ulick had already in exile proven his work to the order by teaching them how to beat the dark reaper so it must have happened before then i don't know just clear up that continuity error and then make the the uh the on foot sections better or he taught vima via force ghost maybe that's a possibility I don't know. That Tales of the Jedi series, everyone's teaching each other via Force Ghost or Sith Holocron. It's just how that one worked. Uh, Alex, what are you thinking? You know, I'm technically getting a remake of it, but I would like under Dr. Lucas from pre-2014 with none of the commercials and everything, I really want like, and by a uh, uh, Nazi Old Republic remake where it looks more like Mass Effect or and just looks better and plays mm -hmm. better um, because it's it's not aged the best. And that's what I the most prefer to see because it's the most story heavy out of all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so that would be my go to. Um, but there's also. Um, that old game that I think would see modern graphics, the uh, Salmon Road. I remember that back in the day, and I would love to see that. And like, uh, they made a, uh, what was it? Uh, what was it called? Uh, Ratchet and Clank. They made a remake a couple years ago, and, it was nice and played decently. So I would like to see one of that for Sam Max. Okay. I got here's one I got. Not a Star Wars game. Uh, I do have a few Star Wars games, but I, I want to see Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings get the... Well, what I really like to see is them to release what they were going to release for PS3 and Xbox 360. But that never got finished because they, they poured all their resources into Force Unleashed instead. But it had similar physics to the Force Unleashed. So I would like to see the Wii port be ported to Switch, or better get the PSP with the with the controls of the PSP port. 
Because I don't want to do motion controls with the whip. They were terrible in the Wii version. And I don't I don't want to deal with that with the Switch controller. I don't want I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Staff King okay. Plus it, it was packaged with when you beat the game, you unlocked Indiana Jones of the Fate of Atlantis. The the point and click game. Which you can get on Steam for really cheap. Um, and it works fine. Uh, but anyway, Dylan, another one. This is going to sound weird, but classic Battlefront 2, if nothing else, because the only way, currently the only way um, you can play the two DLC maps of Renvar and Bespin is to play a modded version of like the, Steam, the one that's available on Steam. So I... I would really like them to re-release it with again that that uh that Xbox deals because if you don't know, uh, if you had the Xbox version of Battlefront Two, there was a DLC that had uh, Renvar and Bespin. It, I they were pretty much the same exact maps that were on Battlefield uh, Battlefront Battle One. Yeah, but they also had heroes and villains um, on them, so that you didn't have to just play heroes and villains on Mos Eisley. And uh, they also added uh, Kit Fisto oh, and, and Asajj Ventress. Asajj Ventress. Yeah, I was going to talk about this too. <laughs> yeah. So, again, the fact that, like, and the only way you had that is if you had the original Xbox and you had Xbox Live, which not a lot of people had um, even back then, Xbox Live didn't really become, I mean, it was big in the Xbox team, but the Xbox Live didn't really become like the industry standard or online gaming for mm -hmm. consoles didn't really become like industry standard until oh, the, the 360, 360 this 360 generation so a lot of people didn't have it and then the people that did have it when the xbox servers got taken down like they if you still had your copy of it you could still play it on single player but that's like very few people have it so again the only way to play those game those maps is on pc so i would love to see a console report of it that has all those dlcs so that people can play how very few, few people were able to play the full experience of Battlefront 2. Alright. Alex, what's another one you got? Uh, uh, man. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm unable to enjoy a lot of the old uh, X-Wing and TIE Fighter games that came out. They're just too yeah. dated for me. So if mm -hmm. they could Make those. I would probably be more interested in seeing them because I know they made like a like a canon type similar game, but I'm not to see a game. So it could be good, could be bad. I have no opinion on that. But as for the Legends games, if they could remake those, I'd be really interested in playing those because one of the aspects of like the books I've never wanted to get into is ship combat because I just, I just don't care. But if I was able to actually out and enjoy that, maybe I could into it whenever the books. Okay. My next one would be because they they'll do these like two in one games, but I would want a four in one game. And this is the I call it the Super Collection, and for for the Nintendo Switch, Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back, Super Return of the Jedi, Indiana Jones: Greatest Adventures. They are all basically the same. They're side scroller games for the Super Nintendo. I would want a re-release of those because lately Nintendo's been doing this a lot. You have the Castlevania collection, you got the Contra collection, the Nin the TMNT collections. All those came out, and those are like eight bit, sixteen bit games getting re-released for the Switch. I think it'd be perfect to do like a remaster, HD remaster of all those Star Wars games, release them on the Switch. I know that Super Star Wars you can get it on the PlayStation Store, but I don't want a PlayStation. I want it on my Switch. You know? So that would be my next one. Um, Dylan. Uh, well, those are my two big ones. Because when I think of, like, other games I've played, like, because Bounty Hunter recently got a port, I believe... Yeah, um, only for the PS4 though. I, really? I would. I really want a Switch port personally. I was gonna get to that, but 
because it was a it was a PlayStation Two and GameCube game. They never released an Xbox version. I didn't know about they they didn't make an Xbox. Interesting. Yeah, it was um, weird. Maybe PlayStation Starfighter? has this like Jedi Starfighter. Starfighter. Well, Jedi Starfighter got re released for the PlayStation Four and Xbox One. Okay. I mean, I'd like a PC version of it because they did Starfighter for the PC. You can still play that. Um, it's not great to play on the PC. Unless you have a joystick. Yeah. Well, like, a, I guess, like, if you were going to turn... I don't know if you could turn one of those into, like, an actual, like, flight sim with... um. Uh, the proper like head tracking um, as well. Yeah, I don't think so either. And I don't know if those would be good games for it. I think the X Wing games would probably be better, but you would have to do a lot to like revamp the X Wing games to turn them into like a proper mon modern flight simulator, mm -hmm. but like keeping like the story aspects of it the same. Last Shadows time. hasn't gotten. We lost Alex. Shadows hasn't gotten a uh, port has recently, has it? No, the Steam got the rights to it, but it's it's not like it's an eight, it's remastered at all. It does have controller support. That was shocking. Interesting. Um, from what, as I recall, I I played through the whole thing back in 2019, so I can't remember if I played through keyboard and mouse, but I want to say. When it's a third-person shooter, I, I usually play them with the, the controller if I can. Um, and that would be the PC version rather than the Nintendo 64 version, which has still images instead of whole video cutscenes. One that could use, actually, and I'm thinking about it, one that could use a proper remaster... And I don't know if they've announced this one, but is a Republic Commando. Because that Yeah, game, they did port it to the Switch. But like a proper remaster, because that game, like uh I know on the PC there's like several mods that are like um like there's like a HUD mod that like gets rid of like uh that kind of fixes the HUD and like the reticle and like the reticle mod as well, uh to make it like more in line with like how the guns actually fire, but like proper mod to fix some of the more egregious errors in that game. Again, the uh, the reticle and the uh, honestly the AI of the squad mates and like have how they get stuck sometimes. Like fixing fixing stuff like that would be appreciated. They did get stuck a lot. Yeah, that was one. I remember when it came out. They they ported it to the Switch, and I was like. That's weird. Where we're getting Republic Commando on Switch. I don't know if I've played the Switch version. I own it. Hmm. Uh, Alex, what are you thinking? Uh, to be honest, uh, a lot of those older games, like that you mentioned, like the side scrollers and stuff, I've not touched. Yeah, and, a lot of these are before your time. Yeah, that's 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 one of the issues of having me on here. I, I haven't lived long enough to talk about a lot of these but i mean uh the jedi like night games or the dark forces yes. are still playable they're still playable but I, yeah i would prefer like an actual like entire like remake like doom is a video game that dark forces basically stole from it's mm -hmm. basically the same game but with star wars things and in 2016 they got or 2014 i forget it got this whole new remake of a video game and it's, you know, it re retains the same sort of feel, but it's completely different. And I would want something yeah. like that for all the Dark Forces games, including when he's become the Jedi and all that. Yeah. So. Part of the issue with the Dark Forces games is they were not meant to be played on Windows 10 and they've never been fixed for it. Mm -hmm. Whereas Steam went out of their way to fix things for Windows 7. They didn't really for Windows 10. So I was talking to you about this earlier, Alex, where um, mm -hmm. Mysteries of the Sith, the expansion for Dark Forces 2, is almost unplayable. 
It is so yeah. hard to get it running. It drives me nuts. I've I tried through all of history of the Sith. I had to um, watch a thing on YouTube about it because I couldn't play it mm-hmm. when I bought. I got Dark Forces two to run, barely. Yeah. The 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 full motion video. It's like a little square in the middle of the screen, so that doesn't. Yeah work so well but like i could get the game to run yeah yeah oh. so definitely a better port of that or an entire like it's not going to happen but a remake of it would be nice too i i just played through jedi academy on the pc and that wasn't terrible it had some glitches with saving when you would when i when i would quick save it would have issues yeah but yeah that's a fun game. That's probably the best lightsaber combat that's ever been put in a video game. I agree. Like a, it's a fucking nightmare near the end. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting all the acolytes and stuff. I try to force push as many of them off of cliffs as possible. Which they make <laughs> that hard. Which is that fair. Yeah. The game's fair. Fun. Or, or you ever just throw thermal detonators and hope for the best because they can force work them back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, my other one, I think I have a couple more because I, I feel like we're running out of steam on this, and I, I have a, I have a few cooking here. Um, specific, specific ones that I want. I, I want all the X Wing, the all the Rogue Squadron games to be put on Switch. I I don't know why they aren't at this point. You can play the first one on PC, but uh, two and three were GameCube exclusives, and three has some issues, mainly the same issues that the cl- first Clone Wars game had, which is when you're on foot, it's horrible. I think Rebel yeah, X Rogue Squadron Three Rebel Dream, I think is what that one's called. It has some really, it's really bad. Um, like there's some missions that, like you're playing through Empire Strikes Back as Leia. Like I remember playing through like the Bespin, trying to get to Han. That's horrible. You're either playing as Leia or Chewbacca. I can't remember. That's particularly bad it's worse than the the clone wars game because at least you had a lightsaber with that unless you have a, a gun and the aiming's not fun um another one i wish they port the psp version of force unleashed to the consoles because that had a mode where you could play historical levels like, you can play the Luke Vader duel from Empire Strikes Back. You can play the Geonosis Arena. It's Mace Windu. Uh, they've never ported that. They just ported the the Wii version, which has some different levels than the, the standard Force Unleashed version. So that's nice. But the PSP version has even more content that's not in, mm-hmm. in other versions. Um trying to think here (coughs) for the for the funnies um the ps1 game masters of teres kasai teres kasi the the terrible mortal Kombat ripoff game if anyone remembers that yep i support that if if you can play shaq fu on the switch (laughs) you should be able to play (laughs) masters of teres (laughs) kasi (laughs) <laughs> That's my logic with that. So this one would be a lot of work, but the the two unique PSP Battlefront games I think need a That's console a and a, a PC port. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I I just want them <clears throat> to, to finish Battlefront three. Right, but that that's as close as we're probably going to get. So, well, there's the Battlefront three Alpha. <laughs> you can get that running. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been an awesome game. I would have spent many hours playing that. Um, what's another? another one? Oh, uh, the Obi One Xbox <coughs> exclusive game. I'm not sure why they haven't ported that. 
I have never played that game, and I don't know anyone who has. It's <laughs> I've bad. never heard anyone talk about it. It's awful. Um, so when you, you know how you use the lightsaber? Guess what? What part of the controller you use for that? Dylan, what, what's logical? What, what's the logical button to use on an Xbox controller for the lightsaber? I have no idea what it, it actually is. But, but where, where would you assign it? Uh, one of the control sticks. Oh, yep. Yep. It's like the Harry Potter games, the 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 Half-Blood Prince and Order of the Phoenix. You know, the, the I call them the carpal tunnel games. So you just get a <laughs> horrible, horrible carpal tunnel. <laughs> um, personally i'd love to see like a, a three pack of the prequel games well Red only Blood. one of them is good what are you talking about you can murder all the gungans and phantom menace <clears throat> yeah but revenge of the sith is like a, a decent fighting game oh yeah no it's pretty good uh, Not even a decent fighting game, it. an excellent fighting game. If you have Xbox Live for the Xbox, the new Xbox, you can play Revenge of the Sith. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I discovered that, and I almost bought an Xbox. But I was like, wait, I don't have $500 to just dump on an Xbox Series X. My brother has one. I'll make him install it. It's fun. It's fun. It's... It's not as fluid as other lightsaber fighting games, but you do get the dark side ending to Revenge of the Sith, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, Dylan, do you remember the challenge maps on Revenge of the Sith? I don't. Well, there's one where you can play as a Magna Guard. There's one you can play as General Grievous. Um, the one I think everyone remembers, though, is that you can you play as Vader and you fight Obi Wan and <clears throat> New Hope, so you can recreate that, but with all the crazy powers that you have in that game. So you can kill old Ben. Um, so there's the multiplayer, which works as like a weird Mortal Kombat sort of game, and also there's a three co-op maps, which are not good. That's like the weakest part. Oh my gosh! Back to the Clone Wars vehicle combat game because that has a multiplayer, but it's that exists terrible. before like online multiplayer. Because it's like it's I can imagine those game modes being a lot more fun outside of the split screen experience. Because in split screen they're they're terrible. Because it's like there's like one mode where like you basically like uh, you like you sit in a zone and then the zone builds up bases and you get like turrets. At like mm -hmm. like stage one, but the longer you sit in it, like it'll actually send out like AI units to go fight, and I can imagine that being like a total blast in like a sixteen player lobby. But mm -hmm. like when you're just doing like a two or four player split screen, it's so terrible. It's not enjoyable at all. Yeah, I just remember the the fighting mode on that. Mm -hmm. You're each in a ship. You're in a one. One's in a, a one of the battle droid tanks, and the other one's in like an a, a ATST, mm -hmm. and it controls so terribly. You just run at each other and shoot. It's so bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, that game uh, could also use a combat. I think revamp just so the enemies aren't bullet sponges. There's like an actual way of taking down a protodega that's not just like. Hold, hold the fire and strafe button the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And take out the uh, the terrible foot combat. Mm -hmm. Get rid of Obi-Wan's terrible tongue ring lisp. That, that was bad. I'm trying to think of any other Star Wars games. What about Yoda stories for the Game Boy Color? I've That's never played those. I've never played it either. Uh, um, what about uh, what about uh, Battle Over Coruscant for the Motorola Razor? <laughs> what? <laughs> or uh, well, uh, another good one. The New Droid Army where you can kill Count Dooku at the end of it. 
which I think they they said, oh, he, Anakin killed a clone of Dooku, and that's the canon. What? Yeah, it was an early Clone Wars game. It was for the Game Boy Advance. It's an isometric, um, like perspective game. It's not terrible. It's the worst sounds I think I've ever heard from the Game Boy Advance. The thing is, that's probably not even like the tenth dumbest outcome between a, a Dooku Anakin fight in the Clone Wars era. Yeah. Everyone well, till TCW. Yeah. It's, yeah. It should have remained that because at the end you actually capture uh, Watt Tambor. Hmm. That's the point of the game. But um, then he's he free. gets away. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's literally right after Attack of the Clones. I guess it it takes place during uh av between chapters of Wild Space because you know that's that's the true sequel to Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Wild uh, Space. Can't believe Matt said it was good. I'm still wrapping my head around that he one. Did? Yeah, what? he defended. He said he likes Wild Space. Space. Why? Because he won't it... defend Siege and Gambit, but he'll defend Wild Space. You know, it's like on the same tier. Bad Siege and Gambit. <laughs> Game. No, he he uh, he well, says that the Bail Obi Wan relationship is good. It's all, right, but so, it <laughs> it shouldn't have been a novel. I can tell you that the Gambit Short duology, right? The Gambit yeah. duology is like the peak of like nothing actually happens, but like more happens in the Gambit duology than actually happens in Wild Space. They're in the they're it's just. Who cares? Who cares enough about Ben and uh, and Organa to sit for like to, for, to sit for them talking in a ship for 150 pages? Because the worst part about Karen Miller's books. Sorry, we're getting off of those video games for a second. That's the fine. There's than, nothing else to talk about with the video games. <laughs> worse than Denning. Worse than KW Jeter's terrible trilogy. Mm -hmm. Every. I love dialogue. Okay, I love dialogue and stories. I gloss over everything else. I'll be honest. Action scenes, all that stuff, plot and character mm -hmm. moments are the only thing I care about. The only thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you want to have an entire book of dialogue, Traitor. Basically just talking. I love that book. I love it. It's my favorite. It's my favorite Star Wars book, probably one of my favorite books of all time. But the issue with Karen Miller is her talking scenes don't have a point. They talk yes. to talk. And it doesn't provide anything. Just mm -hmm. So you can fill out page numbers. It's <clears throat> also stealth and siege. Uh, friggin' Obi Wan and Anakin talk so much to each other about their feelings, and their problems. If that Baker, was something to action specifically, yeah, yeah. Well, that's but they actually talk about things that they're feeling. And the issue with that is the entire point of their relationship is that they don't talk because if they talked. Mm -hmm. And the issues that arise wouldn't happen. It's because they don't talk to each other. Actually, they'll bicker, they'll banter, but they don't actually talk. And because of that, a lot of issues arise. But they talk so much about their feelings in that book, there should be no issues moving forward. But mm -hmm. alas, so that's well, one of my well, biggest no, issues. No, because they, she backpedals on that in yeah. Siege. Because... Well, yeah. She has to. <laughs> Honestly, I think she wrote in that Anakin admits to Obi Wan that he killed the Sand People. Mm -hmm. I think that that was she wrote that in, and they said, "Uh, uh, he, Obi Wan cannot know that. Obi Wan cannot know that um, until after Revenge of the Sith." Yeah, he finds out about it in Kenobi specifically, but like we need to yeah. well he, he figures it out he, he isn't he figures it out he actually finds out about it in um the life of obi-wan kenobi i think yeah right. he read those life of the books but, but even the right talking away. thing so it's not just like that them not talking creates conflict it's also that they are such good friends that they have such a good understanding of each other that they don't need to talk as well, yeah, yeah. It's a, well, the opposite side of coin. 
Because the scene from Revenge of the Sith, when when Obi Wan says, "I've known, I always, I've always known," I just don't talk about it because it because it makes Anakin happy. You make Anakin happy, and that made me happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which, speaking of great talking scenes, again, the Revenge of the Sith novelization, the chapter mm-hmm. where of that's literally just Palpatine and Anakin talking, and Palpatine mm-hmm. just trying to get what Anakin. Do you want? To, West, the what do you want? It's 30 pages of just them in a room walking around talking, and it's some of the most engaging things you've ever read because you can <laughs> see yourself and you know exactly what's going on, you know exactly what he's trying. And and like you're just like, and again, again, the reveal when he finally does like reveal that he's the Sith, it, it has this immense payoff because you because the whole scene has been building to it and you're enjoying every second of it. You, you don't want it to end almost because they're it's great dialogue great mm-hmm. <laughs> just mm-hmm. not how you about, can write dialogue how about when Dooku and Sidious are talking before the duel at yes the invisible hand and they lay out what Dooku thinks the plan is yes yeah and again it serves a purpose because the whole that is the buildup to Dooku's betrayal of, uh, and like in that moment when like a Palpatine says, uh, kill him. And he's just like, Oh, I've been played. That's like, you know, set up payoff. Mm-hmm. What is the payoff in wild space? Nothing. Nothing. They talk to talk. And then, and then, uh, and then bail like, uh, carries him on his back for a bit uh, while they're on the Sith planet. Oh, you forgot right. the most important part. Die, Jedi, die, Jedi, die, Jedi. It just plays constantly. I hate it. I hated yeah. it. Yeah. And then, and then Karen Miller only wants to ever reference a wild space in, in uh, Siege and Gambit. Yeah. That's... And talk about what was the what was the planet called again? I don't even remember. I can't. it has some stupid it's name. Planet. Yeah, it's not Exegol. Is that it's from not Skywalker? It, it, I, I keep wanting to say El place. Segundo, but that's just oh. <laughs> that's just somewhere in Southern California. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't even care enough to look it up. Segola. I think it's Segola. Segola. That sounds right. That's all right. It's a it Sith sounds, planet that, that has never been brought up in the EU and yeah. it's never was never brought Zagula. up. Zagula. Was it? I looked it up. Zagula. Zig- Zagula. Zagula. Ugh, stupid. <laughs> That's never stupid. mentioned anywhere else. Do you remember at the end of Siege when Mace Windu is about to throw a temper tantrum? Because she can't write Mace Windu properly? Oh, yeah. That would be the, wor- the worst characterization of anyone in the in her books is Mace Windu. She does not get how to write him. Yeah. That, like... I didn't read anything Clone Wars after the that that terrible duology, and then I picked up Shatterpoint, and I'm like, it's night and day different. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait. According to the Essential Atlas, Segula isn't even in Sith space. No. So wild. I guess that's why it's called Wild Space. But wild does Sith have a? Why would the Sith have a planet in wild space? I don't know. Because you want to answer to do that. Also, why is Rex on the cover of that book? I don't know. Why is <laughs> he? He's not even the main character. That's no prisoners where he's the main character. <laughs> why is Count Dooku on the cover of uh, Obsession? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is it with Clone Wars novels and putting the wrong characters on covers? Oh, here's the thing. So I've been reading through Jedi Apprentice, mm-hmm. and I, I I read Book Eight, which is the Day of Reckoning, also known according to one user 
on Goodreads is capitalist propaganda, which made me cackle. It's a, so someone said it was an anti-capitalism book. They clearly didn't read the the following one, which is an anti-socialism book. So I don't know what <laughs> yeah. you're going for. <laughs> Uh, but She's just critiquing that, everything. Obi Wan and Qui Gon are stuck in a cage above a bunch of village. Oh, uh, not, right, yeah. Not the, the not the uh, pop group, the village people, but like the people that kill the Frankenstein monster. There's a <laughs> standing there with pitchforks and, and torches. That never happens in the book. It's yeah. like, and then I, the I just read um, book eleven with. Uh, with the the bounty hunter with the laser whip, yeah, never on a swoop fighting Obi Wan. Yeah, no. I was looking forward to that the whole time. Oh look, we Pixie's joining us. Adorable. What, what what a time to be alive. The cats, some flies got in here, so both my cats are in here trying to eat them. <laughs> Wonderful. But, I know. <laughs> She's gonna <laughs> <laughs> some shit. Um, but what's, what's a quote? Hey, Noah's awake finally. Or he's been awake, but yeah. there you live. I don't know. Are we? I don't know. Noah German you... figured out. Yeah. Mister, I'm too busy for anything. He's always too busy. He's Noah. He's, he's too busy Noah. sleeping and yeah, and he's... drawing really good art. Yeah. What's what's and uh. Complaining about Gwendy, the Gwendy books by Stephen King. Of course, I, I complain about the Gwendy books too, so what am I? Um, oh, should we segue into what we're reading? Sure. Uh, actually, before that, a bit of news. So, according to mm -hmm. Joe, Supernatural Encounters is done. Oh! Oh, sweet. Were you supposed yeah. to say that on here? Uh, he he's been saying it for like the last. No, he's been saying, he's been saying it publicly for like the last few days. Okay. The only controversy now is that the, there might be copies of Supernatural Encounters at Legends Con, and so people are a little upset about that. Like to buy? I I would assume so because. Uh, uh, I guess more news um, that I can say now. I didn't know if I can say this last time, but I can say it now because uh, they also tweeted about it. Uh, Brian and I will be at uh, at Legends Con. We will have a table and we will be doing a panel both days. Can I meet uh, you? But yeah, I mean yes. That's 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 apart why we're there. Apart from the panel, I mean apart from the panel. <laughs> apart from the panel. Yeah, yeah, we'll have like, the table. Just, just come to the Twin Suns table. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm expecting there to be like five or six people just hanging out by the Twin Suns table, just talking. I want to like get you lunch or something. <laughs> so. No, it's fine. Yeah. Convention food's yeah. expensive, especially in Burbank. Yeah, it's yeah. still. We, we remember um, getting convention food at Gen Con back in 2016, mm. where uh, we took you to that weird bar. And Dylan says, oh, I go here all the time. Yeah, because at the time, they were the only place that would... They were the only... So, the thing with sports bars, right, is that they don't actually show... They only, like, have, like, the TV licenses for the live... For, like, the local sports. But this chain was, like, the only one at the time that actually had, like, all of, like, the packages. So, you could just ask for, like... You could ask for a game for a team, a home game for a team that was on the other side of the country, and they would put that game on for you, which was great for me because I spent a lot of my life not in the same state as the teams I, I followed. So I could just be like, hey, can you put on this game for me? And they would be like, yeah, sure. And I would just sit there and watch the game. This is also the same bar that I got so drunk at that I fell asleep on the floor at Gen Con. You fell asleep multiple times. But anyway, well, back to uh, what we were originally talking about and uh, how we got to uh, us being at um, uh, Legends Con. So there's going to be... We were told that um, it's a convention thing, convention center thing. There's no streaming. So 
there is filming available, but we won't have a live stream going. So we'll try to film some stuff. We're going to try to film the panels um, and put those up, if at all possible. Uh, but the other is that we can't do a raffle at the, uh, and that's like a California gambling law. Um, because uh, this, the state, the first, um, if you didn't know, the first, uh, the first sentence in the Constitution of the state of California is uh, no fun allowed in this state, right? So, yeah, we have, unless you're at a, a, you're on the res, yes, you can get around that. <laughs> uh, but we will, if you're going, we will be accepting books as donation. We don't have a spot lined up for it because we don't know how many we're going to get. But if you have extra Legends books that you don't need, you can bring them to us and we'll find somewhere in Southern California. Yeah, no raffle. Um, we will be accepting books and um, anyone who donates a book, we still have some lanyards left over from the last celebration. So if you donate a book, you'll get a lanyard. Um, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure, we'll think of other things to do, I guess. We'll also have so donate bounty hunter wars. We have donated bounty hunter wars before. I oh, PC. No, we donated Aftermath. We had someone at Celebration <laughs> Chicago give us a copy of Aftermath, and that got thrown in with the rest of the donations. No. We had people donating to us the Delray sampler, the like the the little <laughs> book that has like one or two chapters of like the five or six most recently published books. Uh, for the con as like a teaser we had like 10 different people donate those to us and like yeah they went in the they went in the to be donated pile some kid at the uh uh i forget the name of the chicago hospital a bunch of kids just got a a book that was like two chapter excerpts of like five different star wars book uh canon books mm. aftermath my favorite it was only book one of aftermath Mm -hmm. Only thing I know of aftermath is what I read live with Noah, and that was scary enough. Oh, you you, you should have just watch my review. I did watch your review. It's just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I called Chuck Wendig a bunch of names that I won't repeat you, on. Here. You did. You did. It was a different <laughs> when, time. It was a different. When time. haven't? When haven't <laughs> we called Chuck Wendig some sort of name? <laughs> Actually, we, he doesn't come up a lot on the podcast. He hasn't really come up a lot since he got fired from writing Star Wars, really. <laughs> what was the last thing he wrote? I think it was for that terrible A Certain Point of View um, book. It was either he that or the comic. Story. The Darth Vader. Was it the Darth Vader comic? Oh, he or? wrote a Darth Vader comic. That's right. He wrote an annual that contradicted a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. That's right. What a shock. The new canon contradicts itself? What? But anyway, what are we reading, Dylan? I am reading Shadow Game still. I haven't made any progress since the last time because I have not had time to actually sit down and read it. Okay. Alex, what are you reading? Well, I'm in a between a I need to get started on Vector Prime. Uh, my on my reread of that. I just finished uh, all of Young Jedi Knights. So that was really fun and great again to do, and Junior J Knights, of course. Um, so that inspired me too, because me and Brendan are writing a short story that takes place in between uh, Crystal Reef and Vector Prime, because uh, I personally have some issues with Jason's characterization at the start of Vector Prime. So I wanted to address that in the story. Um, you mean you don't but... like Jason being a baby back bitch? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that it's just it's just how different it is from how he's portrayed in young jay knights with only a six month gap to cover that change with no explanation so i thought an explanation was warranted Thanks for wickets vector but, prime uh, isn't even the worst of jason being no uh, he's not like, oh, being a baby. balance uh, point balance yes, point. Yes, it's like balance. The, pull your hair out god damn it jason you are a jedi do your freaking job right is there a part where balance point though it's yeah. one of my faves it is a good book. I was going to say, isn't there a part in that book or somewhere else where he's like refusing to shoot in Han's ship, Millennium Falcon? And then yeah. he, Han's are like, you got to go do it. I don't I don't give a crap what you say. Get in the gun. Do what you're told. You're the child. I'm the parent. Go. And I'm like, yes. Yell at him some more. Please. I mean, he he's gets like, over it, but it's like, yeah, like yeah. Invective Prime is kind of excusable because you don't know. But like by... 
by uh, by Ballad's point, it's like they're 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 literally letting refugee ships go so that they can specifically target the planets that take them in. Like, come on, they are the most evil you could possibly imagine. Why are you not doing your job? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love Jason though. It, 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 no matter what story it is, he he's such a my my feelings on him go like this, and it's crazy. It's like a roller coaster because he starts off as the funny, quirky little kid in Young Jedi. It's so like I vibe yeah. with that, and he's, he's the, the whiny little loser. loser. And then he's the whiny little loser for the first half of NGO, and he becomes my favorite character of NGO after Traitor. Oh, well, then, yeah, he has the best arc in New Jedi Order. Yeah, so he's my favorite character in Star Wars. So, ah, uh, does he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he gets to talk to Sonoma Sakat. He gets to talk to a child version of his grandfather. <laughs> that that that's, that's right. a weird thing to explain to someone. That's right. That does happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually I can't remember that if in... that's in Final <laughs> Prophecy or Unifying Force, but <laughs> I think that I think that's in Final Prophecy. Actually, no, not a lot happens in Final Prophecy except yeah, for um, I think it's Unifying. They Force. uncover, yeah, because Final Prophecy is them uncovering like the the conspiracy of um, spoilers, by the way, for New Jedi Order. The conspiracy that like they weren't the Vong had a bad omen to not invade the galaxy, and then Shimra like. Uh, or Onimi through Shimra, like overthrew the previous uh, war overlord to like take over anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the big revelation of Final Prophecy. So, you know what's the worst New Jedi Order story that isn't? Um, well, actually, I can't say that. Or Heretic um, Trilogy. No, Boba yeah. Fett, a practical man. Ah, See, that doesn't yeah. count. That's like that's like that's saying a short invasion. Story. That's like it, saying it is, but, is the worst. But all the other short stories in New Jedi Order are good. So here's the thing. All the other short stories in New Jedi Order were written while New Jedi Order was still happening. Boba Fett, a practical man, has invasion syndrome, where it was written years yeah, afterwards. That's, that's so that they had to invasion. they had to throw it in and like, but you read it and you know like nothing is gonna come of this because like with like Emissary the Void or like uh Recovery or like Ulysia. You could, you're reading it, and as because it's like you're because like the books that are going to come later haven't come out yet, they could use that as a building block to like show how those plot lines would eventually, uh, would eventually like, um, would go. But when you retroactively add another story and put it specifically with Boba Fett, a practical man, and invasion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. the Mandalorian. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna make trick. a comment, but you put it up. <laughs> so, for those listening, the uh, Noah just put in chat: the Mandalorians are the third side of a two-sided blade with the Jedi and the Sith. In quotes, a practical man. I'm almost, I can't remember if that's an actual quote or not. But knowing it's Travis, so, I wouldn't be surprised to that. that. I'm pretty sure. Now, the only thing I will say, just to play devil's advocate. Is if she was explicitly talking about old Republic Mandalorians prior to the groups she had in there, because it kind of like the only other world threat if it's not the Sith back in those days. But they're so irrelevant by the time of the prequels and the OT. Don't tell Karen that Travis that. Have, <laughs> I know she'll get upset, but uh, she got a hard on for the Mandalorian. I mean, I mean, Kreia said it explicitly in Kotor too. She told Candorus like. Yeah, you know, you used to be big and important, but you guys will never matter again. At least not mm -hmm. in a huge, significant way. You'll do minor things that are important. But... Oh, yeah, like Dala's bidding? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's their, their or, whole... or helping or helping Han at the hours. I was just thinking Fate of the Jedi. It was like the I biggest the middle there. finger to Karen Travis. Yeah, oh, Dala is a... Dar Dal is supporting like the slave industry. Yeah, she'll send Mandalorians over to like enforce the pro-slavery laws, uh, in in like member worlds of the new of the Galactic Alliance, for some reason. God. Yeah. yeah I still, I I'll never forget 
the the time in uh, when one of the Mandalorians, under Dollar's order, shot like a twelve year old girl on like live TV, essentially. And well, it still took two books to depose her as chief of state. Alex, did you read the Sword of the Jedi Hand of Thrawn 45 stuff? I, ha I have not yet. I saw your review of it with Matt and everyone, and I plan on going through it. Brennan Quillen Voss, who's an amazing guy, way better than me. You should have him on your podcast sometime. He oh, yeah. Actually, like, I've been talking to him about being on here. Good, because he deserves it way more than I do. But uh, he... Uh, he is dreading it, but he's willing to do it with me since we run a podcast together. I said, look, look, these things get talked about a lot. This Hand of Thrawn gets mentioned around and around the internet. So why don't we, for the podcast, talk about it together? He's like, I really don't want to. I hate I hate even the idea of it. Because he's like really against the Hand of Thrawn trying to write anything post-Crucible because he just sees it as stupid. I'm like, I get that. I, I'm can't... for him not writing anything ever. So yeah. I don't like any of it. I think it's yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, I, I the only things I've read on my own time, which I've not reviewed, are these duologies by him uh, called Twilight of the Jedi, which is yeah, a conclusion I, to the Republic Commando books and a and, conclusion uh, to Course on Knights. And yes. uh, I, from what I read of it, I enjoyed it mainly because the Karen Travis isms are gone because he writes yeah. Mandalorians basically the same as she does without all the preachiness so it's yeah. like all the strengths of her of dividing all the errors of her um and then also a lot of mandalorians die so if you were pissed off with a lot of you know those books you kind of get some catharsis there um so and also i had an issue with the last jedi because you have this whole adventure for four books and then it ends with the status quo Jax pavin's going to go back to coruscant and keep helping the little guy while Vader and Palpatine are like his neighbors. And I thought that was, it's, there's just no conclusion to his character. He's, he's just still doing that. We don't know what happens to him. And so we get a conclusion there. So I thought that was nice. Of course, it's not canon. It doesn't count. But it was nice to get a what if, what actually happened to him in the end story. Yeah, we also get to see Callista be, sorry, sorry. We get to see Callista turn into a robot thing, which was actually really fun to witness. Oh, sorry. okay. Yeah. Do you, do you want me to give you a minor spoiler to the second book? To the Sword of the Jedi? Yeah. Or, oh, I don't care. Go ahead. Oh, Jack and <laughs> Phil gets horribly tortured and gets an eye ripped out. Oh no, I remember you talked about it. I oh, oh yeah, yeah, I did yeah. talk about it. Yeah. 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 It was it was so <laughs> shocking. I started laughing out loud because it was so ridiculous. Jacob uh no Jacob, Boba Fett's like, put out his eye. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. just gouge out his eye yeah I, I hear that sort of the jedi is awful and the, one of the biggest things that makes me think i'm gonna think it's awful too is the fact that you had noah and matt agree which like almost never happens so i was oh, really, yeah with the third book yeah, yeah. that was so that they was were on the same page like it must be bad but at the same time those two books i read those stories i thought were okay so I, I want to read all of it and see and just go through all the terrible and all the possible decent and just see what happens. And maybe Brennan's going to be pissed off the whole time and I'm the one trying to be a little bit more optimistic, but I think it'd be a really funny review. So it, The third book is ungodly long. Uh, mm. The villain, when the villain's finally revealed, you're just like, why? Why now? Why is this happening? There's a lot of why. Mm. Uh, I also so, hear they resurrect people you talked about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because well, he uh, really hates Denning, and he has to fix it. But even even Noah, if he were to make a sequel, wouldn't do that. <laughs> so. No, well, the whole thing is, should we talk about this? If you want to, I don't care. <laughs> okay, so what Hand of Thrawn 45 establishes with Zenoma Sakat is that Zenoma Sakat can bring people back that Zenoma Sakat has interacted with. And Zenoma Sakat's ultimate goal is to bring back Anakin Skywalker. That does not happen in the book. What does happen is that Jason comes back. No. <laughs> also, Mara's a Force ghost <laughs> in the third book, which... Oh, to be the only thing I can, I guess, say be, is I believe his Sword of the Jedi thing was like the first thing he ever did, which a mm -hmm. terrible way to start off. Oh, like, yeah. Well, he's why done stuff since Jedi? then. That's... 
Yeah. It's enough material for one book. Yeah. Get rid of most of it. <laughs> no. In, in fact, it's called Sword of the Jedi. Just have a Jaina solo book. Yeah. Like it doesn't that, I think to be a trilogy. I think um, that's yeah. When he doesn't do like these big story arcs, because what I hear Sword of Jedi is terrible. But if he's doing like a smaller scale thing, like the Republic Commando stuff and whatnot, I think it actually comes out decent because it doesn't affect the universe in like a large scale. Yeah. Like the Sword of the Jedi trilogy does, apparently. Um, yeah. Also, the one Sith are in yeah. it. Which yeah. I hate that as I get older, the more I can't stand that Fright shows up in Apocalypse. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, the more I think about it, the more it doesn't work. Well, mm -hmm. the whole Mortis thing that Luke fights a hentai monster is kind of goofy and too Troy Denning for its own good. Yeah. I mean, I do think I, I like Lovecraftian threats. My biggest issue with fate <clears throat> is not the fact that she's the villain. It's the fact that she's the villain and she never feels that threatening. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll say this forever. Yeah, because... Yeah, to me, like when I've been hearing about Faith the Jedi and like this godlike entity that like went insane, like I was thinking, like, okay, we're gonna go bigger than NGO. Like, this is the one time you're allowed to because now you have like a god like attacking people, right? Like, just the one time. This is and something. then I'll actually know what Troy is. Um, Troy's original plan was to have the one Sith play a role instead of the lost tribe. Oh. Uh, which is so stupid. Yes. Well, um, the only way I could see that working is if it was they were not doing all this fighting like they did, like the Lost Tribe did. It was more like a Darth Plagueis novel where they're doing stuff. Or yeah, you have to do that. You have to kill Luke. Yes. Well, I Luke? I mentioned that, but wouldn't some people still know about it regardless? Yes, because now it's mentioned that they've seen them on the. On like the, so, the after after the duel, camera. he has told the High Council, so all the Masters Council, which includes Jaina, uh, Jaina and all the others, and he's told Ben, neither of which, because no, because we know that the uh, the Fells and uh, Kate Skywalker exist, right? Neither of which can die like in a reasonable amount of time mm -hmm. to explain. Like that's the problem with Luke meeting Crate is that he now knows that there is a tri there there is a group of Sith that is out there that is prophesized to take over the galaxy, and he does nothing about it for ninety years. So the only so, thing I can think of to make this work is Luke has a duel with it doesn't have to be Crate it just has to be what's the what's the caretakers uh, Darth Warlock. World. Yes, have a, have a duel with him where it appears that they all die during it. Yes, that's what I thought too. And uh, then, because Luke, it's clear Luke knew about them because that's why he's coming to Cade. Yeah. In in, in legacy, so mm -hmm. like that's the only way that would make sense and why he would not Ben wouldn't be involved and that sort of thing. Yeah. Also, the, the Jedi need to be on Osis. Yeah, it's that, or um, you have a clone or somebody that is saying that they're, you know, mm -hmm. um, that they're, they're Jaws Crate in like a suit. Um, yeah, my my idea and, was because I know Noah has an idea of like some obscure. I think it's actually a villain from Skywalkers or something like that, where the at the Prime Zeta Magnus character, where it would be they think that's Crate. They kill that mm -hmm. guy, and then you know, Crate still is doing stuff in the background for all these years, and they just right. they think they've taken then, care of the problem. Well, see, well, Crate, stasis, Crate in the most of it. Yeah, oh, yeah Crate and the ones that do at some point need to, prior to the events of Legacy, need to make their presence known to the galaxy because when they attack this the temple on Osis, they are a known entity and they have been in a in an alliance with the Fell Empire for a while. So it's technically not that they didn't do anything for like 90 years. It's probably more like 80, 85 years that they didn't do anything. But it's still a, a large amount of time that you have to that no like unless the Jedi are you have to convince the Jedi for some reason that they're no longer a threat for them for them mm -hmm. to make the decision that they did. 
yeah. and for them to still be an entity that can affect the, the one galaxy. good thing about this though is i do think it does lend if the eu ever does get get continued a lot of interesting avenues to explore really interesting stories with this because we're already just like spitballing but you can make a really good story out of this and i also thought about like ways you could do like little mini stories for novels that are like one-offs that aren't relevant to anything else only connecting thread because at the end of fate of the jedi luke's like you need to go look for the mortis dagger from the stupid tcw episode so we can defeat abeloth once and for all you know so while you have multiple Jedi looking for that. You can have different stories happen while they're looking for that. Like I thought about having, um, what's his name? Uh, the guy from Jedi Academy, the guy you play as. Jaden Core. I've been Kaur. thinking of writing a Jaden Core yeah. story. Jaden Core and uh, Mander Zuma from Scourge. I thought, what if they teamed up? Because I thought they were two unique sort of like characters that had like unique adventures. So have them team up and like go on this one-off adventure while looking for the Mortis Dagger together. But they get on a... Mm -hmm completely unrelated adventure and then you know, that's also Jaden core is potentially a one sith uh sleeper agent but we yep. don't know for sure oh if he's yeah. a clone because of the whole no he is oh. so he is the clone he is the but clone. it's Body's whether or not yeah that's confirmed? but it's whether or not yeah because the original self dies and then they use essence transfer to put his essence into the clone okay because those they books also, confused me this they also tried like they also tried like the brain because the clone had like the brainwash propaganda in it, right? But they didn't know if like the essence transfer like took over the brainwash propaganda, like the sleeper agent part. So it's unsure whether or not like they can actually turn him into a sleeper agent or not. But like mm -hmm. the because the original plan was they would kill Jaden Core and then they would replace him with the clone and the clone would be a one Sith agent. But then the original Jaden Core died, but essence transferred into the clone. And they're the, also and the Jaden so Core, weird. The Jaden Core doesn't. Jaden Core also doesn't know he's in the clone's body as well, because that happened. Like he was unconscious for that, and like someone else did like the, the transfer for him so, while he was unconscious and never told him. But Crate tells Luke there are multiple agents in mm -hmm. in the Jedi Order. Mm -hmm. So that that be an interesting avenue to explore. Well, yeah, you could also uh, make stories about him trying to figure that all out, but also yeah. kind of hard to figure out like who those sleeper agents are, if especially if the idea is that those agents don't know that they are, because then you can't. <laughs> well, we only know about one sleeper agent, um, uh, but it's like <laughs> does nothing about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, as far as we know, because we know stories, but yeah, I, I just think there's a lot of uh, opportunities there, and then you know if. Uh, when Abeloff comes back, and if it's another nine book series or however many it is, she needs to actually be threatening and not be. I so, really, they should never do another nine book series. Yes. No, probably not another yeah. nine book, but yes. you know, whatever. A trilogy at yeah, most. Trilogy. Yeah. Yes. Never, never. That that was the worst idea they did twice. Yeah. Legacy of the Force would have been great if it was a trilogy written by Aaron Alston. <laughs> Same with Fate of the Jedi. Well, because they saw New Jedi Order and they were like, oh yeah, like long series. But like, again, New Jedi Order had like a slow build to it. It was like, an event. Yeah, because yeah. again, Coruscant didn't fall to like the halfway point mm -hmm. um, of that. And then it took them like enough, you know, they were like on the back foot of the war until like balance, until uh, um, uh, shoot, the fourth hardcover um, I'm blanking on it, right? Destiny's Way, when they actually started to like retake the galaxy, it had like an arc to it. Whereas, like, yeah. they didn't have like, and again, the uh, for the first few books, they're not even fighting like the Vong; they're fighting like the Retort, like a uh, like the vanguard of the Vong. That's like a small. The Vong don't actually like come into the galaxy in force until like book four or five, I believe. Yeah, they had like again. It's more of like they had the restraint to keep the early books lower stakes than the later books, mm -hmm. which yeah. led to a longer series. Whereas in Legacy of the Force and Fate of the Jedi, Jason falls to the dark side way too quickly. And then they, they get to the middle of the books where like, okay, Jason is definitely a bad guy. And they definitely know he's a bad guy. But we have to come up with convoluted plots and like reasons for why they just don't go after Jason yet because we still have three or four books left to go in the series I mean, he did i 
I will play Devil's Advocate again because I like Legacy of the Force and I don't like Fate of the Jedi. Uh, so I'll more easily accept criticism. But in all fairness, he accepted the Sith thing or whatever in the first book, but actually committing to that completely was not until book five. So I feel like there was some development within those books before he became, I'm just emo villain now. I feel like there was some time devoted to actually showing that descent to be fair, but it's fine. I know nobody likes it. Now that you think about it, Fate of the Jedi did the power scaling better because there's not really an antagonist in the first book outside of Dala. The Lost Tribe don't come into it until book two, and then Abeloth doesn't really, like, make, like, I guess technically Abeloth is, like, influencing them from the beginning with the Forest Madness, but you don't really know that it's Abeloth until, yeah. like, the halfway point. That's another issue, because the Lost Tribe aren't threatening, and neither is Abeloth, so you have, like... Well, no yeah, space. that's because they didn't kill anyone off. Like, again, yeah. in, in, in New Jedi Order, multiple Bantam characters died. In Legacy mm -hmm. of the Force, two High Council members died. In, in Fate of the Black Jedi, the only, the only deaths are, like, Cha Nyathal, who no one gives, no one cares about, and then all of, like, the, the Jedi from, like, the Shelter Generation that you didn't even know about until, like, they actually gave them names in this book, and then you're supposed to care about them. Like, no Masters die. No, like, previously established uh, Jedi die. So, and then not only do no, no one dies, but, like, again... I've talked about this a lot recently. The actual death count from the, the Fate of the Jedi series, of, when it comes to Jedi, is in the single digits. Mm. Also, they do oh, oh, sorry. a bunch of characters that they don't do anything with. Noah is right. Ken Tamner does kill himself stupidly. Yeah. But again, he doesn't die because of the actions of the antagonist. He dies because he's an idiot. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, that's also weird. Fate of the Jedi is also the book that Sava Sabatine like eats a Sith. That's kind of cool though. Well, she doesn't eat him, eat him. She just like bites. She bites him to death. Yeah, Sava yeah. Sabatine. I mean, that's kind of fun. The worst. I don't know. I Ahsoka exists. I can't. I can't. Oh, I can't. that's. I don't think well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I never cared about Sabo, but I never hated her. She's just kind of there. She's so a pet I mean, character. I, she's blatantly a pet sure, character. Sure, but like, I, she's not. She's just there. She just does things. Like, I, I don't think there's enough of her to hate her. She just kind of does things and then f's off. You know. Uh, Whereas Ahsoka's like a part of everything. She's the most important thing in all the system. Yeah, that's because the new canon made her more that than anything yeah. else. Yeah, well, even I, still I in do. Clone Clone Wars, she's like the most important character. I do remember, no, when the Jedi took over the government and declared Sava chief of state, and then they kept her as chief co-chief of state with like one random politician that like Abeloth like consumed, and and a guy from the New Republic, mil the uh, Galactic Alliance military. You know, Noah, the the one body of Abeloth would be the point if she was ever threatening to begin with. But, like mm -hmm. anybody can take care of her in that series, so it really means nothing. It's probably the most disappointing part of the entire nine book series is the fact that Abeloth sucks as a villain. Abeloth sucks. The Lost Tribe sucks. Again, it's just simple power scaling. Have them kill someone. Yeah. I just love that the the my favorite part of of Fate of the Jedi is when Luke is like ill, and he just kills a ton of Lost Tribe. Yes, yeah. yes. When like he's like, uh, Beyond Shadows, I think it is when like he like. He's not ill. He's just like exhausted from being in like this meditative stance for like a yeah. week straight. And then like he comes out of it and then he and Ben take on two dozen lost tribe members and like kill all but like uh, Vistara basically. Yeah. Vistara and her master are like the only ones that like uh, because they surrender. Her master's her and father, it's... right? I th Was it her father? Um, I don't remember. I, can't remember. I know he eventually died. The it's, yeah, yeah. Her master, and then her her master eventually dies, but Vistara is still alive. Um, Vistara, I liked. She was one of the parts of the book I did like. Oh, and again, Denningisms. The one when she has a conversation, it's not her master because her master is still on cash. But like he has like communication with her, and like she says, "Yeah, I'm uh, I'm like under the care of like Ben and uh, of like <laughs> Luke. He's finally arrived." It, it's, it's only 
And again, you because you know Denning is writing is like, oh, you have a young you have a young male Jedi with you. Maybe you should use some of your feminine charms to try to turn him to the dark side. Hey, okay. Yes. Yes. You're right. However, mm -hmm. again, I have to. I have to to be fair because I try to be fair with all this. You know, with KW Jeter's terrible trilogy, I tried to be fair. I just couldn't because it was so bad. But sorry, I had to throw that in there. So remember Darth Bane trilogy, which most people like. What does Zana do when she becomes a full fledged Sith? Apprentice. What's one of the first things we see her do in the second? Oh, oh yeah, she's seducing she's someone. Seducing because that's something that Sith women do. It is right. something that they use to their advantage that men Sith can't. So I right. don't see that Remember as a when I, for a Sith I, I, do. And it's I'm just something saying, she doesn't even want to do. It's what her father wants her to do. It's a big. I'm just book. saying this is the this is the second this is the second time yeah. Uh, yeah. Troy Denning has written yeah. a female character attempt to seduce Luke. Uh, sorry, Ben. At a, another older male character's behest. Well, I, I'm just saying it's kind of weird it happened twice. Well, yeah, Troy Denning yeah. also had a bug orgy. Yes, yes, yes. There's well, no big defense of that. I don't have any defense of that. Other I than don't have any defense for that. I have to explain that to my <laughs> father when he gets to that. He's reading, he's reading through all the EU yeah. books. He was yeah. very confused by Revan. Oh, he's had uh, to read. He's rereading it. That's how confused he was. Yeah. He got I, confused with Dawn of the Jedi into the Void. He's reading in chronological order. I told him that's not the best idea. Yeah. yeah but he yeah, did yeah. it anyway. The only defense I have for darkness when it comes to that stuff is that all this stuff about bug sex and all that, I legitimately, coming through it, did not notice most of it. It was like a blink and you miss it. The only reason I notice it now, in hindsight, is because of how much Noah has talked about it. Like Ooh, me being yeah, in a server a for two years, identity. but like uh, it's honestly it's not mentioned enough. Why right? it was super obvious to me that it was being a thing. Like they would say something weird about bugs, I'm like okay, that's weird, and I'd move on. Or maybe I was just more innocent. I've become less innocent over time. I don't know, but it just wasn't that obvious to me the first time through. I I just remember when Darkness came out. I'm like, oh, this is how we make a sequel to New Jedi Order. <laughs> okay, yeah. so this Maxwell acting. <laughs> Maxwell's asking, is there anything Denningverse does better than New Jedi Order? Yes. Uh, very briefly, actually putting someone competent in charge of the government uh, with Wynn Dorvin. It's the only time post a Gaberson that someone that is not an idiot or a, psych or a psychopath is put in charge of the Gl New Republic slash Galactic Alliance, and it happens in Denningverse. To, I have to respect Force Fail a bit, though. Like... I could say he's a he's a douche, but then well, yeah, you get but that yeah, but he's like a, star, and that like made me respect him so much. Well, he's a love to hate, but that that alone, that scene in Star by Star, made me go from oh you're just a piece of garbage to like you're not horrible. There are some good parts to you I that I did not see. Before. Before. So Cal Omos Cal was Omos okay. Sucks. No, he was okay Cal. until he wanted to just genocide. The, the wrong <laughs> bioweapon. Yeah. No, you know what he is? You know what Count Omos is? He's just... He's a and then he becomes a nothing character. No, he's a nothing version of Borsk, where he's he's like too meek to actually say what he wants to say, but he's totally just as much of a dick. He just like mm -hmm. holds it in. But like that's and him, he, like, even in NGO, if you discount anything else with him, that literally is just him. So I, I don't mind that they, they, they just went further down that route when he got cocky in Legacy of the Force, and you just see his just true nothing colors. in Legacy of the Force. Yeah. He yeah. is the head of the Galactic Alliance and just lets it fall to Civil War and yeah. does yeah. nothing. Yeah. He's yeah. so he's such a non-player that he lets himself get arrested <laughs> and then lets himself like die by like <laughs> the same thing Gore Spalia did, which again D Denning, why why how come why is it you know, if I had a nickel for every time the person in charge of the New Republic slash Galactic Alliance killed themselves with a proton bomb that went that would only go off when their heartbeat died, when their heartbeat went away, I would have two nickels, which is really interesting that it happened twice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he kills himself by being impaled by Ben's lightsaber, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Do you remember when Borsphalia got assaulted by a Nogri? I remember when he got punched in the face by a booster. That was a good scene. I think that I'm was uh, I saw the last command. I think it does. He gets punched. He gets beaten up by a, a no creek for insulting Leia. And, sure then I, and then Izar's revenge. Booster gets to punch him in the face. And then even then, even in that book, I had to be like, when I was reading that for a second time, I had to look at Borsk again and be like, okay, there's some people, and that's he's not just a dick. He's not just one note like he is in the Thrawn trilogy because mm. we get to see inside of his head. And there's a small little scene in there where, well, he gets punched by a booster. And in his head, I deserve that. And I respect him for doing so. But I'm also pissed off that he did that in front of other people. And so then he lets his, like, anger come up. But, like, it was just that initial acknowledging that he was being terrible and accepting that and accepting the fact that he did that. There's, like, there's a little bit more to him than just just a jerk. And I appreciated that. So... <laughs> But anyway, let me say what I'm reading here. I have just finished Indiana Jones and the Spear of Destiny, which was that? not as good as I had hoped it would be. Oh, um, but we'll get to that when I review that. And I have just started Indiana Jones and the Sargasso Pirates. This is one of a couple comics that came out to promote Kingdom of the Crystal Skull that no one read. Um, and I am I just finished Jedi Apprentice Book 11, The Deadly Hunter. That was really good. That was really good. It might, it almost topped the Captive Temple, which I'm of the opinion is the best of Jedi Apprentice books. Um, Dylan, have you read Jedi Apprentice at all? I have not. Oh, Alex, have you sad. read Jedi Apprentice? Yes, I read all of Jedi Apprentice and Jedi Quest. Okay, can I? Can we just talk here about the opening of Captive Temple and how Yoda's nearly assassinated? <laughs> That's right, how he begins, and the whole temple yeah. goes on lockdown. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Obi Wan and Brook Chun finally face off after. Yeah after like six books of waiting for that to happen. It's a good book. It's a good book. It's a, it's a good book. It, it um, surprised me how much that series, you know, because the initially, you know, everybody, or I remember Matt praising it in the reviews, but I was like, what can they really do? Like nothing happens before episode one. Like it's just a thousand years of peace, right? And so you know, what they managed to show in those young adult books was really interesting. It was nothing high stakes, really, but it was all really good little stories. Yeah, uh, I mean, there are certain things that do um, influence yeah. this in Jedi yeah. Prince. I mean, Xanatos, Palpatine references him at some point. He does. Um, yeah. Can we talk about? We're gonna spoil a bunch of Jedi Apprentice here, so <laughs> you, for this last part of the podcast, uh, Dylan, do you care at all? Uh, no, I'll probably forget all this. Okay, so the big baddie for the first eight books, although he's not in books three and four, but his company is referenced in both of them. The big bad guy is Qui Gon's first apprentice, Xanatos. Um. And he's a dark Jedi, and he's just trying to ruin Qui-Gon. That's like his whole goal in life. Yeah. Is to ruin Qui-Gon. And so in the eighth book, The the Day of Reckoning, this is the first time that Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are back to being Master and Apprentice, because Obi-Wan right. left the Jedi Order at the end of the fifth book to fight, uh, to govern a planet, and that goes horribly wrong for him. <laughs> the sixth book. And so he goes back to the Jedi. So he and Qui-Gon go against the Council's wishes and they go to take out Xanatos only to come to a planet that Xanatos is like the financial benefactor of and he's made it like a gambling planet and everyone gambles and is addicted to spending money. Which is kind of ridiculous, but like the leader of the planet is Brook Chun's father. Right. And so, like, 
they Anaki's made Qui Gon and Obi Wan like outlaws, and they're trying to capture them. And then at the end, Xanatos says, "You won't save me, Qui Gon," and he jumps into a vat of acid and <laughs> kills himself. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my god. <laughs> That's horrific for a children's a book. A family picture. A family picture. Well, this is after the previous book, Brooke Chun fell to his death and broke his right. neck. Right. And, and <laughs> Obi-Wan's friend, I can't remember her name right now. The uh in the yeah. That's yeah. the thing. That's just the thing with kids and young adult books, is that the villain cast to die by their own actions, not by like the, the heroes can't kill them. No, no. Um, but we just, I books nine and ten are kind of, they're fine. Well, book yeah. nine, the first half of it's terrible, in my opinion. It's a bad version of The Giver. And then, like, things start to happen. The, the weird thing, we, I was talking to Dylan about this in before coming going live. It's the the planet is like possibly they're all somewhat force sensitive they've been they've sheltered themselves away from the rest of the galaxy for so long and their leaders are force sensitive to a certain extent they can see the future and they've sheltered themselves because their leaders are like oh um masked figures are going to invade our planet and then it will be destroyed by a right. weapon Right. And and, it's, and then Wikipedia just straight up says it's the Death Star, but that makes no sense. So I was talking to Noah about this, and, and Noah was like, "Oh, it's um, uh, it, it could it's a possible vision of the future." Yeah, I say that it's another super weapon that Palpatine used because yeah. we, we we know that the that he had so many of them. He could have just used the galaxy gun on this planet. I mean, they're all force sensitives. He would that's perceive them as a threat. Probably experiment on them. Yeah, it's, yeah, I could see him doing that. I mean, I mean, we all know he has a son that that's a is Triclops, and a and grandson. Darth Maul's his other son. Oh, thanks, Dave Filoni, for that one. <laughs> Triclops was bad enough. I I like Jedi Prince, but <laughs> Triclops is a it's a stretch. <laughs> a second eye of Palpatine, perhaps. <laughs> that was a plot. That was a plot point in New Jedi Order, though, when they were just like, "What if there's a second eye of Palpatine? Because there's two eyes. We can use that against the Vong." And then that went nowhere because there wasn't. Unless. The second eye appears. The world devastators could have been the sun crusher. It could be anything because this planet only shows up for this book. It's not in anything else. Yeah, and, and, and to say that it's the Death Star when the Death Star's like history is pretty much set in stone at this point, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work. And I don't think the second Death Star ever left the Endor system. Yeah. Uh, I will admit that my my knowledge of the second Death Star is pretty slim. It sounds about right that it didn't move though. Except for IG88 downloaded his consciousness into it. Yeah, and, base story. <laughs> for reasons that are just beyond my understanding. It is. But, I mean, Us mere humans can't. can't. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. I. That's a I good was, question, son of Luke. What if there was a second hand? A second of hand of he did have two hands. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the Empire of the Hand, though? I, Technically, which got built. Oh, another thing. Hold on. Another thing Denningverse did actually well. The Empire of the Hand had been set up in Bantam. They basically did nothing with it throughout all of New Jedi Order, except having having the Chiss send a, a squadron of Clockraft to help in the war effort. And then by Fate of the Jedi, it's like an actual organization. They, they actually have a fleet, and they come in and like stop Dala, and, and then help and then help Jag uh, rig an election against both himself and Dala, so that Dala doesn't win, but also he's not chief of state anymore, so he could go off and be with his wife. 
and, and not run the empire anymore, which which causes more problems because you know you know Jag has to be the head of the empire for for the Fell Dynasty uh, to exist. But you know, at least we saw the Empire of the Hand finally. Well, I mean, we got a we got a good sixty years before that matters. Just so long as he takes over the empire sometime before that, we're fine. Well, well, it has to be Jag. is the most ways. It has to be Jag. It can't be Jag's kids because Legacy no. specifically says Jag was the one that founded the Fell Empire. Yeah. So it has well, I'm not to be saying, Jag. I'm not saying it's his kids. I'm just saying that there's there's still time. He's he's still a young guy. He's only like, what thirty. There's still time for him to take over. Well, the they're empire. in their forties. They're in their forties. That's fair. They might be in their forties, but hey, I forget. Yeah, but regardless, no one, the only one that's spry at this point is Ben. Yeah. If yeah. we really want to go young, Chance. True. To the greatest no. character ever. Hockey the fact didn't that take Chance over until he was like sixty, right? He was sixty. So yeah. Fell's got time to take over the empire. Um, yeah, because everyone's that. That's the problem with the the post Jedi era. After a certain point, is these people are old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a, actually a pretty decent scene in the first Sword of the Jedi fanfic where it's Han and Jaina talking on the Falcon. And it haunts an old man. Mm-hmm. He's not the main character anymore. Yeah. And it's like, this should have... And, I, and I'm reading this, and I'm like, this should have happened in Legacy of the Force. Le- Legacy mm-hmm. of the Force, Jaina, Jason, Ben should have been the primary focus of yeah. it. We don't need Luke, Leia, and Han anymore yes. they can be there they can be side characters but i mean luke's the only one that could still be like main because i mean freaking yoda was like 900 it was still kicking around doing yoda's sure. not I a main been... character though yeah that's fair yoda yeah. yoda's yoda yeah does yes big he does do things, yeah. so yeah but that's why like, even uh, even yoda right because yeah. mi- Technically, Yoda is the most senior, like senior member of the order, but Mace is the head of the council. Mm-hmm. That's true. And yeah, no, no is completely right. They killed off most of the young generation without creating a new one. That's a big. That's a big problem with like, because with focusing that's on true. it, right? You have this whole generation of Jedi. Like I, I call them the shelter generation, the ones that were too young to actually participate in the. Yuzhen Vong invasion, but are going to be the next generation. And we get almost none of them. We get a little bit of Valen and um, I forget her name, but the Bothan in like Legacy of the Force. And then we get a whole bunch more of them in Fate of the Jedi, but they're not like that recognizable. And like the ones that like you really get a sense of, they, they kill them all. Like you don't have you don't have the Jedi Academy trilogy to really like uh, folk, like with the, that first generation to really yeah. get to know them, and you don't have young and junior Jedi Knights of like to really establish them as characters. They're just kind of thrown in there, and, and again, they're, that... they're secondary. Yeah. And you don't, I can't like I, I I had a list of them at one point, uh, this, but like I had to make a list of them because I can't remember their names off the top of my head. They're not yeah. memorable enough. I just yeah. know it's it's Valen and the Bothan and the 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 Falin one, and like I, I know their species. I don't know their names. There because is, that just is not something that, characters. that if the EU ever gets continued, needs to be rectified. There needs to be stories set after Crucible that focus on the next generation. Completely new characters. Well, that was the point of Crucible, but the, yeah. the point mm-hmm. is Crucible. But even Crucible, the... Crucible is all about the big three and Ben and Vistara. Yeah. That's well, all that's in it. Well, I'm talking about moving the grand forward. grand finale for them. That, that's how Troy marketed, Troy Denning marketed this book. I remember the interviews for this. He's like, this is the end. We're going to have something called Sword of the Jedi, and this is this is the transition to to Jaina and Ben taking over. But the thing is, Jaina's I'm not saying I'm not saying 40's old, but 40's a little old to become the main character. Mm-hmm. Right? Like it's so frustrating to me. The New Jedi Order is a feels like a 19 book transition from the good times of Bantam to here's where we're going to be. Mm-hmm. Then Dark Nest happened. And it didn't happen. We, we retconned New Jedi Order's meaning. 
and stuff. And then it's just like it's it's nostalgia before the nostalgia thing was popular. Um and uh quality autism says it best with except it wasn't wasn't lol troy wanted to bring luke han leia back for his anzati trilogy which he started talking about after he marketed crucible that he was going to do well, that all i'm saying is in a hypothetical world where someday we do get okay. legends continued i think one of the most important things is to stick to that initial idea Right, because it most likely won't mm. be Troy Denning, and you know, it might be. I don't Hopefully know. Hopefully, not Troy, but authors that have but, restraint. Yeah, sure. I don't think Troy or would. Troy's in it, or if he's in it, he needs to be better right. restrained. Or if he's in it, he needs to be better restrained. But we definitely need to focus on, we need to have stories that have nothing to do with even uh, Jaina or Ben. Make have completely new young Jedi, and we go on adventures with them. So that way, well, well, we get here to we new characters to follow up with them. Alana and Chance. True. Mm -hmm. But Chance is For really out at that point. Curious. Yeah, Chance is like two. Well, I mean, so I guess have Alana's more five. room to go with Alana. But. Have, have some aging up that Alana has to babysit uh, Chance. Yeah. yeah. That could be hilarious. That could True. be a fun little short story there. Like, mm -hmm. we gotta do something. I, mm -hmm. I'm fine with having dynasties of families whatever with star wars yeah. that's fine yeah. but there's two things that really need to happen one is we need to have younger characters taking over that's that's mm. what's great about legacy is that Cade isn't old mm -hmm. He's young um like the characters in that are young for the most part uh, um the other thing yeah. we need to do is we need to conclude all these characters. We have all these characters that have not been, no one's done anything with them since New Jedi Order, pretty much. You got um, Kip Durin's. Yes. Primate. Oh my God. Well, first they off, I want, I need a book. Sorry. I need a book with him during during Bantam era. I, I, I love him. He's my favorite. I need. The story with him set after Jedi Academy because we have that little short story and that's phenomenal. And then he just pops up for a second in Young Jedi Knights, and then he's like a big factor in New Jedi Order. Apologize for interrupting. I just no, you're I fine. Love him. I love um, him. I need more of him. So, yeah, that's do all. something <laughs> that uh, Kyle Katarn. We need to do something with Kyle Katarn. Grand, these characters are old at this point. True. Um, I, I the thing I like about Cross Current and Riptide, it's Jaden Core. Mm -hmm. Like that's so wild to me that the, the yeah. Wallace Kemp did that. Um, we need more Jaden Core. We need we we need. He'd still be on the older side though, wouldn't he? He's oh like yeah, like yeah. Because he's in his he was like the second class mm -hmm. for Jedi Academy. He was Luke's second class, second or third class. He's in he's between be... um he's in between the the Jedi Academy trilogy, the first class, and Jaina and Jason. The, to be fair to all the old people moving forward, and we also have Dooku, who was pushing eight and still kicking around doing stuff. So mm -hmm. it's certainly possible for other people to kick around doing stuff. We also need more. Yes, man, Rizuma does. Sorry, I saw you know, his comment. We also need more of like the transition, the like the transitioning and changing of the guard within the council because the council right now, uh, as it stands, is basically is basically all like the members of the first class, Jaina, and then um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Saba Sabatin? No, not Saba. The like uh, the the diversity hire that Kent added. Um, to the council oh. as a as a as a yes as a yes woman, and, and then turned on her. That again, we'd never know. But like, what? Where's where's Techly? Where is uh, where's Zek? Where is like the previously established Zach. Jedi that would like naturally take up council member positions? Well, um, that's as the beginning of uh, sort of the Jedi fanfic. Is Zach Hill? Thank you, Marcel. Uh, Noah makes an excellent point about the Aranda siblings from Galaxy of Fear that they're confirmed Jedi. So, what are they up to now? Post mm -hmm. 
Well, we still don't have an answer of what Strain and Kurin Atiyah are doing because the last we saw them was at Mara's funeral. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Who are, again, first class members. Yeah, I definitely think it's a good idea to focus on the younger generation. We should get more stories with those older generations that aren't, aren't as old as Tom um, the Um, But, you know, I think Alana's a good choice. I know Noah before doing fan fiction is called like Jedi Princess, a play on Jedi Prince with. Ken Palpatine raising or, or, or training Alana or whatever, whatever, whatever story we get with Alana, we definitely should have Alana stories. We definitely should have chance stories later on when he's not so little. Um, mm -hmm. And also we need just completely new characters that have not been mm -hmm. made before. Let maybe even bring in some new writers, you know, that yes. can bring in their own new original characters, introduce them into the universe so they can become big players moving forward. And yeah, that's another one, yeah. Son of Luke. When does Kirk and um, mm. uh, oh, what's her name? The the tree one that's also from like the Clone Wars. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, God! I, guess. I I I still haven't read a uh, Brennan's fan fiction because I've been waiting to read it to where it would have popped up in the way in the timeline of how he set it up. But I, I hope he kills off Finn Galfred in in his fan fiction. I think that'd be really funny. But I don't know what he does because I haven't read it. We need to Thank kill you. all of the characters off. That That's are this is really what Anakin Ron Forty Five did. <laughs> well, he didn't. Well, he there's still some that are in Sword of the Jedi. Oh, fair, fair. Banku. Banku. It's, it's Sword of the Jedi. Um. <laughs> oh, that's because. Uh, in the fan fiction, I think. No, that was written first. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Uh, yes. No, Avalos should not be a part of anything no. doing with Alana. Yeah, at the, this is the thing. They've written themselves in the hole that they know exactly how to kill Abeloth now that like but they have to find the thing which is the thing well well yes but like Abeloth is an incredible threat they they all yeah. that's left with Abeloth is finding the dagger and then killing her with the dagger that's that, the thing they too can't if do they, anything more with her well they have to find some way to make her be a threat because how she was handled in fate of the jedi was awful so whatever i don't think you can do that i i'm sure there's some way that they, she could gain power by doing something they need to figure out some way that so that she can actually be threatening before she gets taken out. Because otherwise, why even make a, a series with her? If she's just going to... Yeah. You know, so she's got to be... So, there's something has to happen where she's able to maybe not acquire more power because it sounds anime-like, but something where it, it's not a, a, a walk in the park to just take her out. You know, she has to actually I, be threatening. I do agree, Marcel. That is a mm -hmm. huge issue, and then See, I thought the best way of resolving that issue is to have them come into the scene after Luke is no longer uh, the head of the order. Mm -hmm. and Because, uh, again, the current Master's Council, as it stands right now, is not capable of functioning without Luke. And they could be that guiding hand that helps Ben take over the order, like yeah. wrangle the rest of the Masters. That, that was how I would have done it. But that also it means killing Luke early, which I'm kind of... I don't want to kill Luke early. <laughs> Does he have to die, or can he just take a backseat and let these older Jedi... Well, I think he takes a backseat for a while. I do think he's definitely dead by Legacy, um, by the by the events well, of yeah, Legacy. Well, by Legacy, but... but yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, I don't... I want Luke to be kicking around for another 20-plus years after Crucible, at least. And then just take a backseat. Take a Yoda stance, where he is not the head of... He is still around. He is still... A part of the order, but he is not on the front lines anymore. Other, he is delegating the tasks of running the order to other people and doing yeah. all of the world savings. You know. Mm. So, this is how I see it. I say Ben finds Kukruk. Um, Also, another thing that isn't wrapped up that I had an idea about for post Jedi. Whatever happened to the clone of Star Killer? We need I, I, version. I need a Force Unleashed 3. I don't, need yes. well, I don't, I need I don't think we need a Force Unleashed 3. I think we we could do something where it's post-Jedi. There's like a crazed Starkiller 
because we know that cloning force sensitives leads to all sorts of issues. But he's still they, good at the end of two. Well, but he has issues that he doesn't know who he is. I, I well, say he just goes full insane. Well, the easy solution is that Boba Fett has the hit on him, so Boba Fett eventually just kills him. At the... didn't, he, didn't he give up? Didn't he, didn't he say, like, I don't, I don't care anymore? Do no, he problem. said, like, no, it was, like, another day. Because, like, it was, like, oh. he had him as crosshairs in the reunion, when, like, they had their reunion, and he's just like, oh. no, I'm not going to do this now. So he was going to kill him. Like, that's that's how I would take Starkiller out of the equation. Of course, you also have to deal with the, uh, the problem of how does Vader escape, which I guess isn't really a problem. I don't know how they <laughs> captured Vader in the first place. How, how, how did you capture Darth? Because he well, I, I think, it to happen. Well, yeah, well, I think that was the idea. They would have set that up for the next game that he was planning that, and there was going to be well, some resolution to that, but we don't have anything because it well, never they, happened. Their, their idea for Force Unleashed 3, I thought, was stupid, is the co-op yeah, game with Star Wars or Invader. But I'm still sure the story would have been that he planned to get captured for whatever reason that we didn't know yeah. about. Because that's what it seemed it, like. Because it didn't seem like yeah. a victory at the end of 2. It seemed like, oh, this feels kind of like, not ominous, but like, this isn't right. Well, like, yeah, especially with Vader's, Slave ones follow tracking them. And yeah. then there's also all the continuity issues that, that arise inevitably when you put Force-sensitive and Jedi-aligned characters in the rebellion era, or in the pre-rebellion era, prior to Luke coming out, and, and putting, yeah. which well, I, I think don't know Star how you Killer fix has that. To die. I think he has to die before Episode Four. Star Killer and to Ram, Ram Coda have well, to well, die. Ram Coda would well, clearly die before yeah. Episode Four. Yeah. Well, I say Star Killer gets captured and he's just experimented on. We've seen that before yeah. you know that, and they that... also because of the cloning thing the, the you also have the issue of you have to deal with all of the clones of him too well you they're mostly to... dead uh, boba fett killed all of them did boba fett kill them all in the comic yeah that's okay. the difference of the comic the comic adds he he torched all of them and he also torched yeah. all of his clones mm. as well the, they're the he's the last one with the Django Fett genes. Well, until Karen Travis decided <laughs> that people that there were Django Fett clones that survived. Um, the oh, the sorry, no, 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 Maxwell Boba Fett was hunting the Star Killer clone, not Vader. No. So oh. my thought was that Boba Fett kills the Star Killer clone. And that's how he dies. Yeah, it's possible. Boba Fett's yeah. killed Jedi. Actually, Boba, Fett, Boba Fett's nearly killed Je a lot of Jedi because Boba Fett always ends up being a boss in a Star Wars game. <laughs> I mean, he's a boss in Jedi Outcast. He's a boss in Jedi Academy. That's true. Yeah, Boba kind of sucks. No, well, no, Boba Fett I'm kidding. I'm kidding. doesn't have the force. He does very yeah. well. Remember, yeah. Jango Fett headbutted a Jedi to death in open seasons. It was the greatest <laughs> thing in there. He headbutted a Jedi to death. I prefer Jango over. Boba. No, he didn't. I'm gonna be honest. It was a bit of a hot okay. Speed. I just, I just recently saw those panels. He didn't headbutt him to death. He headbutted him, was caused a nosebleed. And then he garroted him afterwards. Oh, I still think headbutting to death. He could do it. He could headbutt someone to death. He could headbutt a Jedi to death. See, the, the the more egregious one is when he kills Coleman Trevor in Attack of the Clones. Who, simply because of how the way lightsaber forms work, and that he specifically had mastered. Sarisu and was a high council member, being that he was fairly combat combat capable. Sarisu being the one that was specifically invented to be able to uh, deflect and counter blaster fire, 
and he gets killed. He gets gunned down after block blocking only one of the four shots that are shot at him. This is how I in- interpreted that: is that Dooku used some sort of Sith power to kind of stun him? Because I agree that doesn't make any sense. Period. Um, and then he gets killed by Mace Windu in the dumbest way possible. So there is a, uh, okay. I, if you, uh, I forget who pointed this out, but if you watch the fight closely, when he gets like trampled over, um, by like, it destroys the jetpack, And like, he, at one point try, tries to like, uh, use the wrist gauntlet to like, uh, launch the missile at Mace Windu, but it fails. And then he has no backup plan is how that happens. Yeah. It's just that it's horribly choreographed. Like all oh, Samuel L. Jackson's fights are in the prequels. Uh, but anyway, I, I think we're about wrapped up here. Yeah, we've been going for two and a, two hours and ten minutes, and forty minutes of those were, was the actual topic of the podcast. Uh, pretty typical for Legends, honestly. Oh yeah, we had some good talks. So anyway, have a good one, everyone. Thanks for joining us. See you later.